quickly. Uh, so ne next speaker is uh, Sanjay Mugala. Yeah, hey. if I'm, hey. if I'm, yes. Uh, can I, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. Okay. Just go ahead whenever you're ready. So, okay. Um, uh, so first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the organizers for inviting me to speak. Uh, so I'll be describing some recent work which with, with Lessig Motrinik at Caltech, uh, which we should be posting sometime soon. So this is about Hilbert space fragmentation and its relation to commutant algebra. Um, so so this, this is in a, in a slightly different direction compared to other talks at this workshop. So we'll be mostly interested in dynamics of isolated quantum systems rather than uh, rather than just the ground state. So we'll be looking at highly excited states. Uh, and the study of dynamics uh, in isolated quantum systems starts with something called the eigenstate thermalization hypothesis, which is, which is a fundamental principle which governs like the thermalization of initial states. Um, what it loosely states is that eigenstates in the middle of the spectrum of, a, uh, of an isolated quantum Hamiltonian or a circuit, uh, it, it obeys uh, entanglement entropy that uh, scales has a scales linearly with the with the volume of the system. So the situation is something like this: if you diagonalize uh, a quantum Hamiltonian, then you the spectrum looks something like this, where you have the ground state, you have a few low-lying excited excited states, which are some quasi-particles on top of the ground state, and then you have highly excited states in the middle of the spectrum, and these are the ones that are supposed to obey ETH. Uh, there is a strong form of ETH, which says that all eigenstates in the middle of the spectrum, uh, after, after you resolve the symmetries of the Hamiltonian, uh, they should satisfy ETH. And it's believed that Hamiltonians without uh, any extensive number of conserved quantities, they should satisfy the this, this strong version of ETH. But recently there were, there have been two types of sort of ergodicity breaking, which is violation of ETH that have been discovered. These go under the names of quantum many body scars and Hilbert space fragmentation. I'll be talking about the, the second one in this list. So, so the, the way uh, you get to Hilbert space fragmentation is to ask about what happens to ETH in, in constraint systems. Um, typically hard constraints arise uh, in, in effective Hamiltonian. So for example, you subject uh, a system to a very strong elect electric field. You can write down effective Hamiltonians within uh, equal energy or resonant subspaces. Uh, and you can ask what happens to uh, ETH in, in those systems. And uh, the phenomenon of Hilbert space fragmentation is that is the observation that in, in such systems, Typically, the Hilbert space fragments into several dynamically disconnected Krilov subspaces. So, by this I mean uh, the the Hilbert space is a direct sum of these Krilov subspaces, which is basically the subspace spanned by initial state, some some simple uh, product initial states or some simple states. I'll define what simple means. Um, and uh, so, this is this is not very surprising if if these different initial states are distinguished by some symmetries or uh, some symmetry quantum numbers. But the, but the surprising part was that it appears that it, uh, even, even, even though two initial states have the same set of symmetry quantum numbers, there is still this, uh, uh, this uh, fracture into different subspaces. Um, and the, what was observed was that these different subspaces, they can show vastly different properties. For example, some of them can be integrable, some of them can be non-integrable within themselves, or you could have some finite dimensional blocks. So, so all of this is after resolving the known symmetries in the system. And this is a violation of conventional ETH because uh, if, if you typically have this block structure, you the eigenstates corresponding to these smaller blocks, they, they have different entanglement entropy scaling. And so the conventional form of ETH is uh, no longer valid. So uh, what these papers showed uh, was that this, this kind of Hilbert space fragmentation occurs 
generically in in uh, 1D quantum systems conserving dipole moment. So uh, so this is similar to what happens in fractons, but uh, this is in 1D, uh, and this is the definition of dipole moment with open boundary conditions. Um, so so one simple example is this uh, spin one dipole moment conserving Hamiltonian, which has this form. And uh, so plus and minus are the spin plus and minus one and zero is the spin zero. Uh, so what this Hamiltonian does is it implements these, uh, the following rules. These, these were uh, also called fractonic circuits or fractonic Hamiltonians because the plus looks like a fracton. Of course, these have nothing to do with actual fractons in 3D. Um, so, so if you have a Hamiltonian that implements these rules, what you can, uh, easily observe is that there are exponentially many one dimensional subspaces which, which are just basically frozen eigenstates. So you can uh, form a pattern of, of spins which in this form or this form or there are many exponentially many others where none of these uh, none of these patterns appear and so the, it is it is trivially an eigenstate of the of the Hamiltonian. So so these are one kinds of one kind of uh, thrill of subspaces. Uh, of course, there are more non-trivial ones, uh, which which appear to be subspaces with some non-local conserved quantities. For example, if you start with the product state of this form, what you can show is that under these rules, you can only evolve to states with some some kind of long-range string order where plus and minus alternate with with each other. Um, so, so some of the open questions in this field is that, uh, so some of these basic questions is, is to understand how to systematically characterize all of the Krilov subspaces corresponding to uh, some given Hamiltonian. Some work in this direction was done in this paper where they introduced something called statistically localized integrals of motion, which works for some set of examples, but uh, a generic understanding is still lacking. And how is fragmentation different from conventional symmetry, um, such as U1 or SU2? Um, another important question is, is, I said that the Hamiltonian is block diagonal, and uh, an important question is, what is the basis you're using? Typically, it's the basis of product state, but then uh, that needs to be specified because every finite size Hamiltonian is diagonal in some basis. So uh, for this to be a non-trivial statement, we need to specify basis. If it's the product state basis, then uh, the, the, the fragmentation that's occurring is, is basically just a direct consequence of these rules, which could have happened in a, in a classical system as well. You don't need any quantumness. And so one question to ask is, is can some quantum version of fragmentation happen in where this, this basis here is, is entangled? So what we first need is a, is a clear definition of fragmentation, which, uh, which I will now show using this language of commutant algebras. So uh, to define commutant algebras, it's the, it's the algebra of all operators, which are not necessarily local, that commute with each term of the Hamiltonian. So this is a stronger condition than, than a symmetry of Hamiltonian where you're requiring each term to commute with O. And this is, this is an algebra in a mathematical sense, where if you take two operators in the commutant, uh, then any linear combination is in the commutant and any product is in the commutant. And because we are requiring this condition that it commutes with every term, then this commutant algebra uh, operators in this commutant also commute with, with, uh, uh, with, the, with these entire class of Hamiltonians where I've introduced arbitrary coefficients. And more generally, it commutes with the entire algebra generated by the local terms, which I'll be calling the, the bond algebra. Um, so, so what you can show is that, so there is this, in, if you look at the algebra of all operators, there is this algebra called the bond algebra, which is generated by local terms of the Hamiltonian. And there is this commutant algebra, which is the centralizer of this, this bond algebra. And what you can show is that the bond algebra is also the centralizer of the commutant, which is a, a non-trivial statement, but you can show this for uh, von Neumann algebras. Um, and the, the centers of these two algebras, they coincide, which is this Z. So, so, uh, in a, in a, so this, this language is kind of 
standard in in stabilizer codes uh, where where this algebra a is uh, generated by the terms of hamiltonian is basically the the group algebra of the stabilizer group uh, and this this algebra c consists of all non trivial of a as well as all non trivial logical operators so a is abelian so uh, a lies within c in stabilizer code and in that case it's it's sufficient to just consider the group structure you can forget about the superpositions and all the the extra structure in algebra so uh, so even even though many many conventional symmetries uh, appear as part of commutant algebras even though people don't talk to, talk about it in, in this way so for example if you take the spin half xx model this is the model uh, and then you ask what is the set of terms that commute with a uh, set of operators that commute with each term of the hamiltonian and you and it's just the total spin in this case um, and the the commutant algebra is basically uh oops, it's a typo here uh, it's it, it's just the the span of all of the powers of these total uh spin operator um and this 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 also happens in the spin half heisenberg model where this is the hamiltonian and then all of these operators the total spin in the x direction y and z directions they they commute with each term of the hamiltonian and the commutant is uh is basically the span of all powers of these these uh, x y and z operators which is sometimes called the the universal enveloping algebra algebra of of su2 um and so so what can be shown is that this this the dimension of this commutant algebra which is l plus 1 in this case and something larger here is related to the number of these blocks in the hamiltonian that i showed in the earlier picture and uh to give a, a concrete definition for hilbert space fragmentation uh we look at this this dimension of the commutant for conventional symmetries uh it is typically it scales polynomially with increasing system size whereas in these fragmented models uh what you observe is that this this grows exponentially with system size so uh to give a simple example um so uh one simple example of fragmentation appears in this uh so called tjz model which is basically a model of two uh species of particles say fermions hopping uh on a lattice on a one dimensional lattice so this is the hamiltonian where the c tilde s are are these constrained fermions so you cannot have up and uh, down fermions on the same sides but they can just hop hop around on the chain um this this model has two obvious u1 symmetries which is uh given by uh the the total number of these up spins and total number of these down spins and because of these rules it's easy to see that the full pattern of spins is preserved in one dimension so you cannot go from this configuration to this configuration where the the pattern is changing because the up cannot hop over the the down and so this is this is a simple version of fragmentation where in in the product state basis and the number of uh these crillo dynamically disconnected crillo subspaces is basically just the number of these patterns which is given by this number and uh so these uh slyoms for these models were constructed in this paper where they observed that the spin of so you have 2 minutes yeah sure uh the spin of the lx particle from the left is is conserved so uh say the second particle and you can construct these operators which non local operators which measure the spin and those are the conserved quantities but to approach this problem from the point of view of commutant what you observe is that these operators satisfy some certain commutation local commutation relations with these uh, terms of the hamiltonian um and a complete basis for this algebra can be uh, constructed using these highly non local operators where the summation uh, runs over Uh, under certain conditions uh and so most of these quantities here they are functionally independent from the conventional conserved quantities of local conserved quantities of n up and n down which means that there are these new dynamically disconnected subspaces and uh what it turns out it it turns out that uh, the slyoms uh defined in this paper are basically just the generators of these commutant algebras so you take products and sums of all of these slimes 
to recover this entire algebra, but uh, it's easier to work with the full algebra in, in many cases. So for example, in periodic boundary conditions, there are no, no slimes that are known, but this algebra is easy to construct. So, uh, so in this language, we can now ask the second question is, uh, is there any uh, example of quantum fragmentation? So this, this happened uh, in some models studied in the literature. Um, so you take the spin one biquadratic model, which has SU th SU3 symmetry. Um, so this is the Hamiltonian. What you observe is that the ground state degeneracy uh, grows exponentially with system size, which means that there are some of these hidden symmetries. So it turns out that the bond algebra in this case is the uh, temporally leap algebra with, with L or L minus one generators with this value of Q. Um, and this, this paper back in 2007 constructed the commutant for this model explicitly. Uh, and what you observe is similar to what was in the TJG model that it's not generated by any local operator. And the dimension of this commutant, it scales exponentially with L. Uh, the, the block diagonal structure in this case uh, is easily understood in the spin one singlet basis. Uh, it's not the product state basis. So it's uh, an example of the quantum version of fragmentation. So could you uh, wrap it up quickly, please? Yeah, right. So uh, in this case, the commutant is non-abelian. So this leads to the, the large degeneracies in the spectrum. So this brings me to my summary uh, that commutant algebras, these are the natural uh, language for Hilbert space fragmentation. It also gives a concrete definition. Um, it allows us to distinguish between classical versions and quantum versions of fragmentation. And uh, the, a similar construction works for uh, dipole conserving models, which I showed on in the beginning. But uh, so the, there you have this bond algebra, commutant algebra, but both of these are more complicated, but in some cases we can get exact results. Um, so more details will be in an upcoming work. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, so I think now 